Crypto Dog of the Rescue here. Welcome to my channel. Hit the like button, smash the bell, comment below. YouTube's uh, changed the algorithm again, so uh, if that would help me out, keep me uh, going here on this channel. So let's get right into it here. Uh, as you can see, Bitcoin is at 11,000, broke the 11,000, and is now kind of staying over it, hopefully. And uh, Ethereum's over 300, so it's about 320. 18 right now so that's good good for me i mine ethereum and obviously i have bitcoin and ethereum uh, that i hold so uh, other things that i would consider holding as well for you guys is this is kind of what i do uh for my i guess my top five right now uh crypto.com you know i do obviously have some cardano and i'm going to be picking up some xrp as well because uh, it is i think is a good coin to have in your bag um, just for diversity right um, Stellar is obviously a good one um, that I hold, and uh, Neo I am still holding um, from a long time ago, so looks good that it's starting to go up a little bit. So everything's in the green right now, which is great to see uh, in the cryptocurrency world. So moving into the charts here. So let me get my big head out of the way, and we'll go from there. Uh, moving into the charts here, as you can see, Bitcoin. Took its nice rally up for the past seven days. Let's zoom in here. And these are day candles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we're on day eight and it's starting to do, looks like possibly a little correction. It's a really strong green bar coming up. And everything's been on a power play. As you can see, your MAs are on an incline up. And it passed a buy point on your MACD. And everything's just going up, gapped away very, very well away from all these moving averages and convergence and divergence slides. So it's a good thing to see, but you know, it looks like it may correct down a little bit. Uh, don't know how much. Right now it's at 10, 9, 45. Uh, this is Coinbase. So that's a good thing to see um, as far as it's gone up, you know, two grand uh, in the past seven, eight days. So it's going to have to correct a little bit sooner or later. Just don't know how much it might correct just a little bit and then start keep going you know it just depends on uh the sentiment and the not and the, you know the market that's going on and everything that's going on around the world so and we're going to get into that because i really want to get into you know what currency is what money is what's the difference gold and silver and why when the dollar is diluted and it's getting diluted as we speak and you know we have another stimulus package coming out another trillion dollars it, it's going to get diluted pretty, pretty badly, you know, just based because, you know, everybody's, nobody's working, hardly anybody's working and our GDP is just crap right now. So I'll get more into that, but, you know, just looking at Bitcoin from a, I guess, macro point of view, because, you know, I, I invest in Bitcoin, especially now I'll buy as much as I can. And, and, and the way I do it, just far as anything that I buy, doesn't matter if it's gold, silver, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, whatever it is, I basically think you know, think about it this way is if, if it's going up and I don't know if it's going to keep going up, I'll buy a little bit of Bitcoin somewhere. You know what I mean? So I bought some, I believe, just after this uh, RIB, which is a I, IRB, which is an isolated red, red bar in this wave up um, because it's gapped away so far. They, they actually a lot of traders, day traders will buy on that isolated red bar because they're not huge bars like this. So it has room to grow and room to boom. Now it's boomed. I want to know if you want to call that an isolated red bar or not, just because I look at the fight that's going on there. But, you know, that's uh, a little more into the language of the candles and, and, and uh, you know, the combination of the cam candles languages. So let's move forward into gold. And I kind of want to show you, you know, on a Forex, you know, Forex, we didn't have Forex until 1972. Um, and now we base everything basically on the Forex uh, chart model. So. This is gold, gold spot as we speak right now. And this is going back, you know, let's go all the way back to here and then we'll look at things. So as you can see, the last boom it had was in 2011, I believe in August of 2011. And now we're, you know, we're at all time highs. So that's, it's great to see, but it has so much room to grow and we're gonna get into that as I move forward into this video. So you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Um, and the same thing with silver, if you want to go back, silver had its big boom in, I believe, April of 2011. So that's, you know, it has much, much more room to grow as far as booming up. And again, we'll go into that as far as why and, you know, based on the dollar value 
and things going around the world, currencies and money. So moving into what is money, you know, what is lawful money and what is the difference between legal tender money currency, right? Well, we all think that we're spending money right now. What we're actually doing is spending national currency and national currency was based on gold and silver, um, a base, you know what I mean? Backed by gold or silver. And uh, that was lawful money. Gold and silver is lawful money because it's God's money and it, you know, it comes from the ground. We don't just print it and put value on it just like we're doing now. So uh, back, I believe, in 1933, they changed that whole what is lawful money to basically whatever we print, legal tender, basically. Um, so that's the difference. But back in, I believe, 1913, uh, it basically says in the Fed Reserve, um, you know, act that you're supposed to have at least 40% of that legal notes backed by lawful money, which lawful money was basically God's money, gold and silver. So now we've gotten away from that. And it's kind of what I'm saying is, you know, we, you know, even our forefathers said it, that that's, you know, the start of the collapse of our economy, because you can't justify the spending of the money and, and the regulation of actual legal tender um, out there, you know, if you're basing it on something. So we had it in there, you know, for a long time and somehow it got through without anybody knowing because I think we got confused of what lawful money is and what legal tender is. And of course, the Federal Reserve has very, very diluted the uh, definition of that. So, you know, we'll go from there. All right. So moving forward, as you can see, this is gold in yellow and gold here. And black is currency, so it's actually the U.S. dollar. So as you can see, back from 2016, you know, it's kind of was kind of relative to each other, and then now, 2020, it's gone away from each other. And of course, you have to ask yourself why. You know, what's going on? Well, as you, like I said, we're printing money like there's no tomorrow. We don't back it with anything besides supply and demand, and we can just print and print, which we are printing 12 billion a day. And we're in the trillions right now. And then we have another stimulus package coming out to, uh, you know, give everybody money again. And it's just going to have to keep, you know, unfortunately happening just because of the way our GDP is working. It's not working the way we want it to. So how, we're, how are we staving it off? Instead of thinking of other ways to do it, we take the easy way out and we just print more money. Um, it's an easy fix and it's easy to, to get things up and going. Unfortunately, it causes bubbles. It causes collapses. It causes all these other things that we know historically it's, it's going to happen, but we just don't seem to learn from our mistakes. So, uh, or we're just so far down into it, we just can't get out of it, you know, at this point. We've been doing it for, uh, you know, since the 90s at least. 72 is when we got off the gold standard. So, you know, it could be from 72, but at least from the 90s is when you can really see a significant change in things and then the historic, you know, falls and drops of the stock market and our currency. So, you know, moving in, like I said, this is USD index um, from stock charts. And this is just showing you the US dollar compared to the other bags of currencies all around the world, right? Every other currency, you know, you base it, or they're always USD versus China, you know, the yen, USD versus, you know, other currencies. So this is what it looks like. It, you know, just take a mental picture of this is how this graph looks. Um, and then you'll look at this one compared it to gold. So if we were on the gold standard, this is what it would look like. This is not a logarithmic, this is a logarithmic scale. Well, let's get it off that and put it on a linear scale. Um, and it'll show you, you know, just linearly, you know, it's, it's gone down dramatically based on if it was gold standard, this is what happened to our dollar. Uh, and this is based on the other currencies, right? So big difference. You know what I mean? And the way things are going. And that's where you're, you know, the Fed res is kind of at a precipice where, you know, they may go back to this standard, gold standard, just to stave off and fix all these issues. Um, but we'll see. So, you know, this is the shadow stats, alternate CPI. And this is from gold silver. Now, this basically just shows you the Federal Reserve uh asset of gold doesn't you know account into you know money printing by the banks and all this other stuff it's basically just the federal reserve and as you can see you know this is 2018 
but it's at the lowest, their asset as far as how much they're holding in the Fed Reserve balance sheet and like how much they were holding back in, you know, 1980. So it's uh, it's considerate, considerable because it's at the lowest point from where we started uh, after we got off that, you know, gold standard. So it's it's amazing that, you know, their balance sheet is so low with with gold, you know, holdings, assets. So. Um, interesting to see because I believe that's going to be going up here real soon uh, in 2020. And uh, this is, you know, going into bonds, you know, I just want to talk about bonds real quick. You know, the U.S. bonds were, were created to, you know, for a reason, obviously. And, and let's see if we Wikipedia will actually load up for me here real quick. Uh, it's sovereign bonds, you know, you know, it's basically, it is now, you know, issued by the national government um, and it's for, um, government spending, you know, and just, you know, right here, if a government is close to default on its debt, the media often refer to this as a sovereign debt crisis. So when you're in a sovereign debt crisis, well, the government will take over all sovereign bonds, back control over all sovereign bonds, everything, you know, everything. They'll take them all back just because they have to um, in order to stave off default and pay for the debt and they're spending, you know, so that's when, you know, you go back to this and you look at the bond yields and it's gone down to point, point three, zero point three right now. I mean, it was under zero point three a couple of days ago. So, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, so when you start looking at these things and, um, you know, what bonds are for, you know, silver and gold prices compared to the dollar, uh, you know, everything it's not looking good for the US dollar, which is why I keep telling everybody, get into Bitcoin, get into Ethereum, because that's the new gold and silver as far as digital um, and, you know, uh, easier for, I guess, uh, the new millennium generation to get in and uh, build investment, build wealth, retirement funds and so on and so forth. This is what they're into. And it's people's money, you know, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, that's all the people's money. And gold is God's money. And that's why I want everybody to get into those two because it's not government. And the government will eventually have to revert back to go to God's money or the people's money to um, stave off debt and become profitable again. Uh, you just can't keep, you know, printing money like this and then giving money stimulus out, you know, a trillion dollars, you know, more debt. It, it just can't happen. So, you know, keep all this in mind. But this is why I want to make this video. What is money? What is, you know, uh, and what is uh, legal tender? You know, lawful money and legal tender. Uh, last but not least, crypto fear and greed index. Whoo, all the way up to 76 right now. Yesterday was at 58. I mean, it's 20, 20 point jump. And then last month was at 40. So that's 36 point jump. I mean, like I said, everybody's now, oh, yeah, sentiment is great. And sentiment is really a big thing, too, when it comes to silver and gold. Um, you know, investor sentiment is a big, big thing. So if the investors are scared of the dollar not doing what it's supposed to be doing, they're absolutely going to get into gold and silver, and that's really what's happening right now. So you guys keep it in mind. My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please smash the like button, hit the bell, comment below. Has no value to you. It's great value to me. Thanks. Have a great day.